Good afternoon, students, families, and supporters. My name is Valerie, and I work with the New Student and Transition Programs Office. We are so glad you are joining us for today's session on experiencing SBU and beyond. During the session, we have representation from the Career Center and the Study Abroad Office. To start off the session, we will hear a little bit from each of our panelists, and from there, we will open the floor for your questions. This session is being recorded, and access to the recording will be available on the same page that you logged into. Feel free to submit your questions throughout the session and we will get to answer as many questions as we can. With that, I'd like to introduce Kristen Pelicanos from the Career Center. Hello, thank you so much for having us. My name is Kristen Pelicanos and I am the Student Employment Specialist here at Stony Brook University's Career Center. So I am actually going to jump right in and we're gonna do a quick overview of some of the Career Center's services, um, we're going to go over a little bit about what we do and what we offer. Um, and then, um, as Valerie mentioned, we will have some time for questions. Um, so please feel free to, to put that in the Q&A. Um, and I'm also joined here. Actually, let me share my screen. <laughs> Realized I wasn't. Um, there we go. Um, I am uh, joined by uh, Ursula Zalewski as well, uh, our Director of Experiential Education, and um, Alex Fryman, our Program, program sorry, <laughs> Outreach Coordinator for the Center for Service Learning and Community Service. So they will be answering questions as well. So if you have anything um, you know, towards those areas, feel free to put those questions in the chat. Okay, so... Um, a little bit about the Stony Brook University Career Center is that um, one of the main things that we are hoping to do is to promote career readiness with our students. And that will be our current students that we work with as well as our alumni students. So we work with undergraduate, graduate, and alumni with lifelong career services. And our aim is to help educate students about their career development, to know more about the different options and industries so that they can make decisions. Also to prepare them um, to take on experiences, learn from them, and then whether they wanna go into further education or they're going to enter their career, and as well as connect them with our employer partners so that they can, um, you know, have that direct, uh, you know, connection to different hiring organizations. So a couple of the things um, that we offer, and there's a little bit on the next slide too. So this is just a very big overview, but the main thing that I wanna take away um, for, for our students here is that we use um, Handshake, which is a platform for both uh, career services. So scheduling appointments, like you see here, we have one-on-one -on -one appointments with all of our different uh, career coaches, as well as it's a job posting platform for Stony Brook University on-campus positions, internships, volunteering, as well as off-campus positions. So Handshake is the hub for all of those different things. And as you can see on the right side, there's something called career communities, which we have eight different career communities. Seven of them are based off of industry. So instead of, you know, going to a specific uh, place for your major, we actually group things by career interest. So you would be able to see any of our career coaches, uh, depending on what industry you're interested in going into, you can actually be in one or two career communities. We don't recommend usually more than three, um, but we also have our exploring career community, which means if you're not sure yet, that's okay. We have our exploring career coach who will talk you through different things about yourself, your strengths, what you're interested in, what you're learning at college and helping you navigate that as soon as your first semester. So you don't have to wait until you know later on in your college career. Um, the other thing that I wanted to highlight here is, yes, we help with resume, uh, review, cover letter, mock interviews to help you shine on your application and help you be able to show employers your skills. But we also do career coaching to help students um, to find internships, uh, you know, on campus, student employment, volunteer positions. And then also we have peer to peer career coaching as well. Um, uh, the Career Planning and Gain Experience, our website has a bunch of different resources that you can look through 
um, right now. So uh, I would put it in the chat, but I think it's better. I know that not everyone on the recording side will see it, but if you just type in Stony Brook Career Center and you're taken to our main page, um, I'm going to quickly show that so everyone can see. Uh, we have all of these great resources under, we have the career planning, so learning more about how to get started. And then we have this really great page for gaining experience and all of the different experiential opportunities that we would help students connect with. Um, and each one of these has resources to learn a little bit more. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit further about um, our Center for Service Learning and Community Service as well. So um, let me go back to this slide. Another thing that the Career Center um, provides um, is different types of events throughout the academic semester. So that's the fall and the spring. Um, and what that looks like is basically we're connecting with employers to bring them here and to show um, Stony Brook students different opportunities and they get the benefit of connecting with the talent here at Stony Brook. So one of the uh, main things is that each fall and spring, we will have job fairs where students will be able to go and speak with employers um, set up in, uh, in person as well as one virtual option. So um, the fair that will happen at the very beginning of every semester this in the fall and spring is the on-campus job and internship fair, which basically is us inviting all on-campus departments who are hiring for students uh, and that could be in a, a credit bearing internship or paid student employment positions, uh, as well as federal work study, uh, research assistance, and that's undergraduate graduate level as well. Um, so we would invite them all and then students in the very first week of the semester could go around and meet those different departments. We also will have our volunteer fair where we invite different organizations to come to campus so that students can learn more about the volunteer options. Um, and then we have our, based off of our career communities, our industry fairs, um, and you can see them there, as well as our diversity recruitment job and internship fair. And then we have some other large scale events that helps you uh, students connect with employers. Uh, one would be our employer resume review and our mock interview day. So you could get feedback directly from an employer who works with us closely. Um, and then other programming throughout both the fall and the spring. Um, we have a bunch of different uh, of our career coaches um, and our employer relations team working to make these events so that you and the students uh, can learn more about their options and, and using the career center to the fullest potential. Okay, um, so as I mentioned, we have our Center for Service Learning and Community Service. Um, so this would be something that uh, a, a resource specifically where students can learn more about how to connect to service during their time at Stony Brook. Um, and so one of the things that I highly, highly recommend is to use the service. It's going to be, it is still connected to the Career Center, um, but it is its own resource where you can schedule an appointment, learn more about volunteering, learn more about what that looks like and gain really great experience that will help you learn more about what you wanna do um, whether it's in a specific field or you're open to uh, learning about different types of service as well. Um, so this is just an overview. I don't think I'm going to go through um, each one because this is that page that I showed you. So those, that web page has resources for each of these. Just know that we're um, you know, here to help you learn more about the different options. Uh, and it doesn't have to wait until your senior, your junior, senior year. Um, this can be as soon as you enter, you can start exploring these different ways to gain experience. Um, and then we actually, um, we'll go to the next page. This is uh, something else that we help students focus on, which is after they gain these really great experiences, how do we show that to an employer? And how we do that at the Career Center is by helping students recognize these career readiness competencies are also known as career readiness skills. So these skills, um, the language and definitions is from the National Association of College of, and Employers, which we call NACE. And NACE talks to employers from all different industries and asks them, what skills are you looking for, regardless of what industry you're recruiting for? And these are the skills that come back. So when students gain all of these different types of experiences, we help them then connect that to what they're what they put on their resume, how they talk about their skills, what um, 
skills they want to grow more of, what maybe they feel really confident in. Um, so that's another way that we kind of help students put, put that together. Okay, so some quick tips for, for students who are thinking about coming to Stony Brook. Um, one of the things that I highly recommend is that if you, you know, if you do in your first semester, getting to know the people here at Stony Brook, that's your professors, your advisors, any staff members, as well as your peers, of course, um, getting involved as soon as possible. So we have a platform called SB Engaged. So Handshake will help find you all these experiential and SB Engaged is a way that you can find out a lot about student organizations and student clubs on campus, as well as events on campus. Um, so you can use that to kind of get connected and, and learn more about it. Um, then use the resources available, attend any on-campus events, make connections. Um, so if you're like, oh, I don't know if I should go, maybe just show up and see that there's, you know, it's okay if you don't know anyone because there's a lot of people there who are looking to, to just learn a little bit more about whatever that event is, uh, you know, covering. The other thing um, is look for opportunities actively. If you're, if you really want to volunteer, you really want to get an on-campus job, start that the next step of looking and if you need support that's what um, the career center would be here for as well as engaging with the center for service learning community service um and then yeah that web page that i showed you earlier so if you typed in stony brook career center you went to the main website if you go to students and gain experience you'll see a lot more information about all of these different things and resources that we recommend okay i think that was yeah, that was pretty much it. If there's any questions, we'd be more than happy to, to go over. Um, if none of our attendees have any questions, I'd be happy to throw some your way, Kristen, if you're if you're willing to humor me. Sure. Um, so one question is, when is a good time to get an internship? That's a great question. So I would say if the summers are super valuable. So if students are, you know, maybe the first semester they're still getting to know Stony Brook, but they're like, I really think I would want to optimize my summer uh, and get a summer internship. However, if they're looking for on-campus internships, which we do have different departments on campus that have internships, the best time to look is in the spring um, and then they recruit for the next year. So you don't have to be a junior or senior. You can, you can look as soon as as soon as you feel like you can manage a weekly time commitment, that's another thing. Um, so if it's an internship, you would be making sure you would be able to balance all of those things. Um, but yeah, it's it's never too soon. And if you already have something you're interested in, definitely uh, just starting the process of looking into it is a good idea. Great, thank you. I'll just throw one more your way. Um question we get pretty frequently is, are students able to work part-time and still get involved on campus? Yeah, so one of the things that if students are working part-time, whether they're working part-time on campus or they're working part-time off campus, um, I would say the most important thing is that um, obviously having an idea of how much time they need for their courses, their studies, their homework, their assignments, but then how much time could they realistically commit to uh, their part-time job and, and anything else that they're doing. Maybe if they decide, oh, I'm doing this job, but what if I could get a job on campus and do both two things at once where I'm connecting to the campus community, also being able to, to you know, get a paid part-time position. Um, another thing I would add on to that is if someone's not sure if they can balance all of that, definitely look into volunteering. Like maybe it's a weekend and you have more flexibility. If you right now can't commit to, let's say eight to 10 hours a week where you're working uh, another job or something additional. So um, you definitely can do both, uh, but I would say connect with us at the Career Center definitely. If you're saying, well, I'm, could I do another paid position that's more closely related to what I'm interested in? Great, thank you so much, Kristen, um, from the Career Center. I'll just ask you to stick around just in case we have some students asking questions at the end, but if you wouldn't mind unsharing your screen. Oh, yes, sorry. All right, thank you so much. No, no problem. All right, thanks again, Kristen. I would now like to introduce Margaret Hartopoulos from the Study Abroad Office. Margaret. Great, thank you so much. I'm just going to share my screen. 
Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Margaret Hartoffelis. I currently work in the International Academic Programs Office, also known as Study Abroad. So today we're just going to discuss how you can see the world and earn credits. So for starters, why study abroad? So when you study abroad, you are forced to step outside of your comfort zone, which is a really great thing. There is growth and discomfort. So over 96% of study abroad students report experiencing personal growth from going abroad. This can include increased confidence, increased intercultural communication skills, um, having a better understanding of themselves, and, and the list goes on. And that's because when you go abroad, not only do you step outside your comfort zone, but you're meeting so many different people, you're in a different environment, you're learning different perspectives, you're getting the chance to enhance and develop your critical thinking and your problem solving and your flexibility skills. And these are really great skills and competencies to have both inside and outside the classroom. There's also, of course, professional expansion as a result of studying abroad. So fewer than 3% of American college students go abroad. So because, it, you know, when students have this experience, they're actually able to stand apart from other candidates, for instance, if they're applying to a scholarship or a fellowship or maybe even graduate school or their first job out of college. So it's important because they can use all the various different skills that they've gained on their program when trying to market themselves and it gives them this competitive edge. And of course, there's also academic discovery. So when students go abroad, because they have these you know, wide range of experiences, they start to get a better understanding of themselves. And oftentimes they're exposed to different subject areas and whatnot that makes them realize what passions that they have. And then the big one is that students are able to make degree progress when they go abroad. So students can earn credits for their major, their minor, their student curriculum, those SBC general education requirements. They're able to make degree progress by any of these components by just going abroad. And even by participating on any one of our programs, students can get two general education requirements knocked out. And those are known as the EX2 plus and GLOW requirements. And that's on any program. It doesn't matter which location or the duration or any of those factors. So we have programs all across the globe, whether it's Africa, Asia, the Caribbean, Europe, Oceania, or South America, we likely have a program that fits uh, your interests and needs. So we have different program types. So for instance, we have partner university programs. We have partnerships with institutions around the globe, many of which are globally ranked. For instance, University College London, it's a very prestigious institution and you can be taught by University College London faculty members and attending class alongside UCL students. It's as if you were to go to a Harvard or a Yale for the semester. So students who participate on a partner university program would be an exchange student. Um, this could be during the semester or perhaps the winter or the summer semesters and they would receive transfer credits and the grades that students earn on these programs will not be calculated into their Stonebrook University GPA. We also have faculty-led programs. So that means that students are going abroad with a Stonebrook University faculty member and they're being taught overseas with a cohort of students. This is a more structured program. The program director sets the itinerary. You'll have a little bit of free time, but it's really up to the program director's discretion with what activities and excursions and whatnot that will be going on with the program. So typically these programs are, the faculty-led programs are during the winter or the summer terms. For instance, we have a group of students who are going to Ireland this winter or um, to Ecuador, et cetera. So because these are Stony Brook University courses taught by a Stony Brook University faculty member, the GPA for the grades for these courses will calculate towards the students' Stony Brook University GPA. It's important to note that language proficiency is not required for these faculty led programs, despite being in a country where the, the language may not be English, because the courses are taught by Stony Brook faculty members, they will be taught in English. And then we also have internship and experiential learning opportunities. So these are, of course, great experiences, great resume boosters. Students could, for instance, do some research in Jamaica or Israel or take an internship class in an art gallery in Italy. Uh, so we have ample opportunities for students to be able to build their academic portfolio and get their foot in the door that way as well. 
And it's also important to add that we have programs available in the winter, spring, summer, fall, and even the academic year. So we understand that sometimes students aren't able to dedicate an entire fall or spring semester to go abroad. So it's a great opportunity for them to perhaps go in the summer and spend a few weeks or in the winter and spend a couple of weeks. So it offers you that flexibility. Languages. So most of our programs are taught in English, and it's also important to note that English is widely used around the world. Um, but of course, there's always a possibility to study a foreign language and earn credits while you go abroad. For instance, you could go to Florence University Arts for the semester, and you can actually earn the Lang SBC. So that's one of the general education requirements that most majors have, is that you have to have two semesters of a language. So we have partnerships and where students can take one or two, if not more, language courses and be able to knock out those degree requirements. And of course, if the language of instruction is not in English, we will ask students to provide a language proficiency recommendation from perhaps a Cermic University professor. We always want to make sure that students are able to succeed when they go abroad. So this is one of the factors that we have into account because we don't want you to be in, in a course for two or three hours a week and not be able to understand and grasp the information fully. Funding your program, so this is a big one. So our office awards over $50,000 in scholarship opportunities every year. It's called the IAP scholarship and more information about that could be found on our website, but it is available to Sunnybrook University students. And every week we offer $500. We have a raffle every Wednesday on our Instagram. So I recommend you give us a follow. It's at SVU Study Abroad. We post weekly stories and all you have to do is answer our stories. We'll do you know some quiz questions. Whether you answer the, the question correctly or not, you'll still be entered into our raffle to win $500 that you can apply towards your study abroad program. There's also nas nationally competitive scholarships such as the Gilman Award. And of course, we always recommend should you want to apply your financial aid towards your program to speak to the financial aid office. They're more familiar with your financial aid record, so they're the experts when it comes to that, but it may be possible for you to apply your financial aid when you're going abroad. It's also important to note that studying abroad, you know, the cost for doing so is very comparable to living on campus at Sonia Brook. In some cases, it's even cheaper to go abroad than it is to live on campus. For instance, if you were to go to South Korea, your bill may be less than if you were to live on campus for that semester. And of course, check out our website. We have a tab called Funding Your Program, and there it lists the various different scholarship opportunities for you, some of which are sponsored by my department, some of which are other Stony Brook University departments, and it'll list the eligibility requirements, how to apply, et cetera. And here's just some brief little screenshots of our website. You're able to visit the outgoing students tab and you can explore our programs by region, by term, by country, by program type. Maybe you want a faculty led program as opposed to a partner university program. And then on each program's page, you're able to view a plethora of information. So you can view the cost sheet, you can review the living arrangements. Sometimes you're able to see the program dates and the list goes on. So I always recommend students when they're trying to just get that initial research done to visit our website. And there's tons of details available on there. Great. So that concludes my presentation. If anyone has any questions. I'll kick off the question asking, Margaret, if you don't mind, um, I'll ask one of our frequently asked questions, uh, which is how far in advance should a student contact your office to help prepare for a study abroad experience? That is a great question. Thank you. So we always recommend that students plan ahead because that gives them more academic and financial flexibility. However, that doesn't mean if you are a senior um, and you decide you want to study abroad four years down the line, it doesn't mean that you can't. But we always recommend if, you know, if you're in your first year or if you just transferred here, if you're interested in going abroad, please don't hesitate to stop into our office. We'll be able to put, put you in the right direction. Maybe if you honed in on a particular program, we'll pair you up with your IAP coordinator and we'll be help, help you to plan accordingly because you know we don't want you to miss any deadlines or to take a class here at Sonia Brook that you may also be able to take abroad so that'll help you you know get that step ahead. Great thank you and just one more question 
Um, we had some questions from parents in the past. Can you offer advice to help persuade my son or daughter that they should do a semester or a year abroad? I love that. So um, I'm a little biased because I've also studied abroad as well. Most of the staff members here studied abroad. So we've experienced firsthand the plethora of opportunities that we've had as a result of our study abroad experience, whether it's the current jobs that we have now, the you the unique perspectives that we've been given, the many different people that we've met and be, you know become lifelong friends or have had an impact on our lives. Um, and you know, I, I mentioned a little bit before why site abroad, but it's it's really just such a phenomenal experience that we recommend every student has. But um, you know, it, it's it's truly life changing opportunity. And we want students to be able to experience it now because we don't know when they're gonna have the opportunity again to be able to go abroad for three weeks, for a semester, for an academic year. But it's also important to note that, you know, we always make sure that our students are safe and we provide them with various different resources to ensure that their health and safety, that's our number one priority. So we have our mandatory pre-departure orientation where we discuss the mandatory health insurance that students need, or we have the Center for Prevention and Outreach that have, has a presentation. And there's also staff on the ground at our partner universities that are just like us, just in France or just in Ireland, whatever it may be. And they're the first point of contact for students should something you know, happen or if they need anyone. Great. Well. Thank you so much, Kristen and Margaret, for being here with us today. Um, thank you everyone for joining this session. If you wanna go back and watch the session, it will be available soon on our YouTube page. Um, but if there are no further questions, have a good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much for joining.